and a half where the, there was a big power outage here, uh, Kevin. Look, the ingenuity of people in Roma have all put their heads together and fixed the problem and we're back up and running. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's one of those things that unfortunately happened and the, the whole, of, whole of Roma's power went out uh, for those that aren't aware and finally, I think about three minutes before they were possibly going to call off the game, the, the mains power miraculously came back on. So we've finally got a game on our hands. We've got here to play and there's a, there's a big crowd in attendance and uh, a, a bit more time to, to sort of attend the bars before they uh, before kick off. Here's a look at the two sides and uh, this Queensland Red side, Kev, it looks like a, a very strong lineup. Yeah, I think this will be pretty close to what they're, you'll see round one. Look, I think it's it's interesting to see you know the guys of Liam Wright, Lucan Salakai Loto coming back in, Fraser McWright, Harry Wilson. I think that's a really good back five combo that they're going with there. And then look, we're obviously looking at guys like Taniella Tupo and. Um, Tate McDermott, sorry, uh, that'll probably come back in. But I think this will be pretty close to the starting 15 for next weekend. Yeah, and Coach Darren Coleman for the New South Wales Waratahs has indicated as well earlier in the week at the Super Rugby launch that this is his 15 that he is looking to run out against the Fijian and Drua next week, potentially as well. Yeah, I think for particularly with a new coach coming in, it's important to get a bit of um, you know time in the saddle together, and that's probably what they've been doing. You know, it's for a new coach, a team that didn't perform very well last year. I think they'd be first to admit that they, uh, you know, they didn't win a game. They went through a, a tough season, so I think it's important they get some time together and learn how to you know function together as a unit because it's it is all new and they've got to make the most out of these trial games. All right, so here come the Waratahs. And it's a very parochial Queensland crowd here in Roma, but there are cheers. It's nice to, just to see some rugby players out on Gallus Fox Park to this evening after what we've endured earlier. <laughs> An extra couple of hours worth of beverage consumption as well, I'm sure, has has helped the situation. Everyone's just happy. Yeah, it should. Uh, yeah, hopefully everyone stays happy. But yeah, look, it'll it'll probably uh, intensify the bit of heckling coming from uh, from some areas of the crowd. But no, look, it's great to to see we finally got it on. I know a lot of work's gone into preparing this, uh, not only the field but everyone out there for the whole week. And so it would have been a shame if we didn't get to go to see it come on. So it's great to to be out here and uh, you know hopefully we see a good game of rugby. There's been plenty of preparation for this field as well at Gallus Fox Park. There's been uh, all sorts of um, people coming around from around town to make it into the spectacle that it is today. So we thank everyone for their efforts for getting this up and running as Liam Wright leads the Queensland Reds out onto the field here in Roma to a big cheer. And a very strong Reds lineup, and this man, James O'Connor, he's going to be key to their season. Yeah, he is. And look, he's uh, he showed last year what he could do in the 10 jersey. Look, I'm not sure whether 10 is his best position, but I think it's the best position for him to play for this Reds team. He gives a bit more maturity to the young guys around him, and I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. He's had a, probably a bit of a disrupted week with, a, with some COVID uh, curveballs thrown in there, but... In saying that, it's probably good practice because it's going to happen this year with the way that the, the world's running. There's going to be COVID complications, so it's probably a good thing with the team. Brad Thorne, I don't think, was, was around the team until Friday. So, look, it's, as much as you, it's, it's frustrating, it's probably good practice to how you can run it, what you can do, and what, what you need to prepare to, to get things right to play a game. So, uh, yeah, while frustrating, I'm probably, a, probably a good thing for, you know, good to happen in pre-season so you can get a, a dry run at it before the real, real thing kicks off. That is absolutely right. We're less than a week away from the kickoff of Super Rugby Pacific. But right now, Ben Donaldson gets us underway here in Roma for the final trial before Super Rugby Pacific and already some heavy contact. The boys have been fired up for this one. They've had to cool their jets for an hour and a half, but... We're finally underway. So Thomas just shuffling the ball back for the box kick, and he goes high. And it's gone straight up. Not a lot of distance. Falls into the hands of Down Gunu, but called back. Initial knock on. Yeah, it looks a bit of a clunky start there from the Reds. Obviously, good take early on, but, you know, Thomas just... just got underneath that kick and uh, yeah maybe a maybe a factor of sitting in the changing changing room for an hour and a half extra than they needed to from getting off the bus so look feeding each other out but this is a good opportunity for the Tars uh, you know good good scrum positioning so we'll see what they go from set piece here 
Here's another look at the high ball. And, yeah, just popped off NASA there, I think it was. And into the hands of Dalgunu. And right, co-captain for the Reds this year. Alongside Tate McDermott, who isn't playing tonight. Ruben Keynes, your man with the whistle today as well. Plenty of chatter up front. Should be a good battle up front here, I think. You know, both both front rows are probably close. You know, obviously Taniela Tupo's not there for the Reds, but I think the Tars front row is as close as they'll have. Maybe Dave Parecki might come back in, depending on what happens. But look, I think it's a, it's going to be a good battle. It's, a, it's always a, that sort of bit of frustration, as I said before. You're sitting in the sheds, you're probably prepped ready for kickoff at 7.30. You're not kicking off till 8.50. So there's a bit of bit of tension going on. So this is your first uh, way to exert it. So we'll see where we get to here from this scrum. And a great view of it there on your pictures at home. Gordon breaks away. And, oh, big bumping run there from Dylan Peach. In at first receiver, they go out the back door to Ben Donaldson, has to pop it off the ground to Parisi. And Parisi only knows one way. He straightens it up. Johnson Holmes for Ketty. Flows a looping ball over the top to Gamble. And Gamble makes good metres up into the 22. They miss out Horton there and find Johnson Holmes who shifts it along to Holloway. Swinton with quick hands. Beautiful hands, in fact, from the Waratahs. Getting some phases together now. Donaldson, Parisi, and Turner has to go back and tidy up, but it's been picked up by the Reds. Untidy, good pressure there in defence, and will pack a scrum. Already some tension. And the Roma crowd love it. Yeah, there's plenty of feeling out there. Yeah, you can hear the crowd in the background really giving it uh, on that far side. It's a, it's a temporary stand that they've brought in just for this fixture here at the, 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 Roma, the Roma ground. So, look, I think there was some really good work here from the New South Wales Waratahs. Not in this part, but earlier they, they made some good metres. They got some good carries at centre field, and then they shortened the Reds up on that right-hand side. So I think they'll get a lot of confidence out of that. They hold on to the ball a bit better. They probably pushed the pass. Didn't really need to push that miracle pass out the back. Hold on a bit. They're getting some good carry and some good quick ball, which is stressing the Reds' defence. Solid from the Reds, Thomas. And feeds Stewart in at first receiver. And sending it back to O'Connor. O'Connor has to scramble, puts it on the left shoe, and it's not his best. So we will have a line out to the Waratahs inside the Reds 22. You can, I mean, this, this is very much a typical bit of a bit of a trial game you know you can tell that they the connections not there the the slickness of how to exit you know that should have been quick easy ball uh, a long kick downfield from james o'connor but he was rushed because there was a, a bit of an ordinary pass because of the the ball at the back of the ruck was tough so look just need to clean it up it's a trial game but guys need to just probably tighten things up a little bit there horton goes to six, Gamble pops it back to Horton, and here's Harris running a big angle. Will Harris charging down towards the five. Dylan Peach, who had an impressive first touch, is brought down on the five. He's Holloway. Really peppering this Queensland Reds line now. Bell. Bell driving, but it's been ripped off him by McWright. Gordon cleans it up, though. Chance here for the Waratahs if they can find some hands, but they can't. Ruben Keane was playing penalty advantage. This will come back for the penalty, but the Reds under the pump early. Yeah, and uh, look, I think the Tars are, putting, are making some, some good inroads. They've got some big carriers getting across the gain line, and 
they're really putting the, the Reds under the pump. They certainly look a, the better team in this first five minutes. They look more up for it. The Reds are probably a bit, a little bit slow out the block, blocks for whatever reason. Uh, but look, the, the Tars certainly look up for this one, and there's a huge opportunity. They've gone for the scrum, uh, so we'll see where they get to from here. Yeah, it was a good last scrum. We 30 seconds. Let's witnessed. Go. Let's go, White. We're in. We're at Gallus Fox Park, the home of the Roma Echidnas. Great to bring this level of rugby out to the regions. The Reds are very good at doing that. And so are the Waratahs. Fine. Set. So Ben Donaldson sitting in behind, but he goes short side. Big scrum from the Waratahs. They feed Peach. Here's Gordon again. Holloway. He's close. Another penalty advantage. Red 13 offside again. New advantage. Oh. Red 14 offside. Red's really struggling with their discipline at the moment. Gamble. A little pick and drive. Here's Swinton. It's the big Pistons going. Waratahs, very close. Okay, we're gonna we got multiple advantages. Been lost forward. So you heard Reuben Kane about four times then say new advantage, new advantage. The Reds were really eager to get off that line. Yeah, look, I think it's again it shows that you know the, the Tars are putting them under pressure, and so you can hear here that. So we had multiple offsides yep. after our scrum. Don't we? Okay, we need to take an extra step, obviously, in space, okay? The morning's on the boys, okay? Yep. Space. We're taking an extra step. Do you want to scrum or is it a setting up? Yeah. Seven Jake. minutes isn't a Jake. great time to have a warning, you your first warning for, for a yellow card in the game. So look. It shows the pressure the Tars are putting the Reds under. The Reds are, uh, are needing to infringe to stop them. I mean, the Tars, if they had been a little bit more organised there in the pick and go, I think they probably would have gone over. But the, the Reds felt that they had to infringe to uh, to stop them. So, look, it, it, another huge opportunity here for the Tars. It looks like they're going to go to the scrum again. Interesting to see what they do here. They, they a bit of bobble ball at the back of the last scrum, which probably impacted. I might wouldn't mind seeing Harris off the back here, picking now their centre field going on the left there with the away from the nine and and then maybe hitting the 12 up short so we'll see what happens he's a big unit will harris isn't he all uh nearly 200 centimeters of him big body for number eight and it's good to see him maximizing his potential saw him in the under 20s australian team a couple of years ago when they made the final in argentina gordon Tars looking to use their scrum. Here's Gordon. Donaldson taps it up, but it's been lost forward by Newsom. They had a penalty advantage, though. It was a big scrum from the Tars. And you'd think they might pack it down again here. Yeah, I think so. This is where, uh, as, a, as a tight forward, you get a little bit frustrated because that, that scrum was going forward. And if the eight holds that in there, I think you would have got a little bit closer. So, look, it was, uh, it was a huge scrum, big big work from the tight five there you can see here the ball gets to his left foot and i think he just loses it here as it moves forward see he, if he keeps that in there i think that's a penalty try i think they're going over and he's putting it there so look it's uh, another huge opportunity here for the tars reds under enormous pressure uh they'll do well to to keep him out here the skill for donaldson to just tap that up for newsom was was quite sublime to watch Let's have another look. Fine. Set. That one flies straight out for Gordon. Gordon breaks off the back himself, brought down a meter out. Swinton jumps in at the scrum half. Donaldson pops it for Newsom. And Alex Newsom will score first for the Waratahs. There was a sense of inevitability about that happening, even though the scrum, the set piece wasn't perfect. The ball pops out the back, but you can just sort of tell here as Gordon decides to take it, pops out. Harris misses it again, but Gordon, good carry, and then nice shift here from Swinton, and just easy hands, sense of inevitability. No one can get around the corner from the red, from the red scrum, from the good carry from Gordon, uh, and overall an easy uh, try for, for Alex Newsom.
and, and good reward for the Tars. They've been putting sustained pressure, and I think they'd be happy with that. You want to go in, in these games, you want to sort of execute. They're down in the 22. They came away with points, and they came away with with five and, and you know, hopefully the maximum for them. So that's a that's good reward for their first trip into the red zone. The one thing that you hear about uh, Ben Donaldson is that he always looks like he's got a lot of time, and you actually notice that in that period of play there as he strikes the conversion and the flags go up, seven points to nil the Waratahs, but he just had all the time in the world to make the decision whether to throw the long ball or pop it short to Newsom. Yeah, no, I think that's, you know, you, you can get too over-eager. Sometimes the tens can get try and get too flat, particularly with the try line. It shows a good bit of patience to just slow his feet, allow the Reds defender to come on him, and then there's a, there's a hinge in the defence, which Newsom picked out nicely. So, again... Some nice bits of play there for, for the Waratahs and a good start uh, to the game. For Campbell with the restart, and he sends it high, and it was left late for James Turner, but he did well to reel it in. Jimmy the Jet. And Donaldson clears. Chance for the Reds now, and O'Connor opts to go high. Well played at the back from Newsom, and he sets off. Makes five or so metres for Ketty. Floats a long ball over to Peach. Peach stepping inside. Contained by Stewart. Down Gunu. Thought he saw the ball out, but it wasn't. Clear communication from the ref. Yeah, it's a silly, silly penalty there from Dungunu. I just the ball was never out, and uh, you can't. There's no, I don't think there's many arguments. You watch that back on uh, on Monday morning and, and realise that, that that was not a smart thing to do. He's got a look at it. Not only was the, the ball not not out, I don't think he was on side either. So. <laughs> so this takes play down into the Reds' 22 again. Tom Horton hits his target in Jeff Cridge. A nice little wraparound play again, and Peach hits a big hole. Four out. Gamble has to fly in and secure the ball. Red's looking to counter. Bell to Swinton. Johnson Holmes looked up and spotted some space. He's inches short. Penalty advantage. Holloway in there digging. You can hear Jake Gordon there saying he's got to go, and I think he's probably right. Six, six, I think after giving a six, warning about four minutes ago down here. Harry Wilson. Proud oh. Queens. Oh, there's push and shove here. Cheers from the crowd. Plenty of feeling. Doesn't matter if it's a trial, Queensland and New South Wales, yeah. you cross that white chalk and it's on. Exactly, mate, and particularly in a, a very proud Queensland town like uh, like Roma, there'd be a very parochial bunch in the crowd giving plenty to the men in sky blue or the men in white at the moment. Nothing's happened there. So if you're on now, take it back to your teams. Okay, you're not going to have that again. Yeah, all right. It's the second time. We've already had it once. I didn't care who started it. Okay. We had players from both teams come in. It ends now. Okay. Yeah. I'll let, I will address that. Okay. Jay, let me address it. Okay. Liam. Liam. So the ball was short. I'll ask him to play it. He hasn't moved. Okay. The next infringement is going to go to the bin. Okay. We'll come back down here and there's a penalty again. All right. It'll be go. No. Jake Gordon doing his absolute best there. Yeah, I, I th look, I think I can understand. I, th I think probably in, in season that would be a yellow card, but I think the ref, you know, which, you, which you've got to applaud, it is a trial game. We want to see some running rugby. We don't want to see 15 or 14 or, or you know, going down to short man. So, but I think he's now, he's laid his... Uh, his his cards out. He literally, he said, "Look, next time anyone infringes down here, they got to go." So, yeah. look, I think his his hands were dealt there. But you know, I, I think in in season that would have been a that would have been a yellow card oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. But I don't mind the fact that he's given a bit of leeway in the trial game because you know that's what we're here for. We're here to get get a run out and 
Although we are playing for the Santos Cup, which the, which the Tars do hold. Absolutely. So, Everyone yeah, wants any, to bring that one home. Any bit of silverware is good bit of silverware, mate. Particularly, you know, Waratahs had a pretty lean year last year, so they want to put something in the, in the, in the trophy cabinet. Solid once again. Let's Stable base. We're going nowhere. No, I want you to use it. Told to use it. Gordon breaks out short. Newsom again. Pops the ball away. A beautiful out of the back of the hand. And the man waiting is Ben Donaldson. So try number two for the Waratahs. They're having a cracking first quarter of this match. Yeah, very. They've come out the box fast, haven't they? Look, I think, again, a really good set piece, strong set piece. I uh, get told to use and it's just almost like a, a flip of what happened in the first try. Instead of Newsom passing to Harris, uh, sorry, yeah, Harris passing to Newsom, Newsom passes to Harris. So it's, um, it's, uh, it was a, a fantastic try there for, for Donaldson, sorry. I'm getting the wrong, wrong players there, so apologies. But yeah, look, a really good set piece and the Tars again, two trips to the red zone, two tries and likely to be seven points again. Yeah, skillful play from this young Tars team. Uh, they are still very young. Mm. Not a lot of, not a huge amount of experience there. And Donaldson eyeing up a second conversion, and this one is straight down the middle as well. 14 nil, nearly 12 gone. Yeah, this will be great for the confidence for the Waratahs. They played, obviously had a good win last weekend in a trial game and they've hit the ground running here. For the Reds, they've just got to get their ball, hands on the ball. They've had no ball in anywhere, any decent position. Every ball they've had, they've kicked away and they've given away penalties. So for them, they need to probably, next time they get given the ball, let's have a run with it. Let's, let's build some phases and see where we get to. Yeah, absolutely right. The territory stats and the possession stats are out of this world for the Tars at the moment. Donaldson has to rush the kick a tad, but finds touch up towards halfway. It's a good kick. You know, there was a plenty of pressure there, so it's a great kick to get the ball that far up near the halfway. Now now we've got a uh, Reds line out, so a big opportunity to, to see what the Reds can do with the ball in hand. You're right, they just need to put some phases together, don't they? And they got the opportunity through Stewart. Thomas with quick ball with Wilson. Oh, looked out the back, played short, and it was forward. But penalty. So a nice little let off there. That was the biggest head dummy I've ever seen from <laughs> Harry Wilson. He looked very far at the back and played it. He looks like he's been watching a bit of rugby league in the uh, in the off season, watching yeah. some old school tapes of you know Brad Fittler, Laurie Daly. Look long, play short. That's it. That's the the old motto, isn't it? But again, a bit of a let off there for the Reds. You know, another unforced error, so to speak. And but the, the Tars are offside, so we get an opportunity here. Better better field position. Interesting to see what they do with the ball this time. NASA. Can't hit the mark. It falls to the side of the Waratahs, but it was knocked on in the air. It was a fair contest. Harris thought he was off and racing. We're coming inside the 15. Knocked on in the lineout. Yeah, good pressure from the Tars at the lineout. I think it was a bit, a bit of a bit some slow movement there coming from the Reds. A bit telegraph of what they were going to do, but good pressure. So I think it's uh, again another let off, but a good opportunity here for the for the Reds. You know, a big, big scrum first. I think it's their first ball on their feed, so interesting chance to, to see where they can go. First trip to the 22. They need to come away with some points. So the scrum was under a bit of pressure earlier on, but that one's solid. Down Gunu. Overran it. It went backwards, though. It's play on. His fluke. Running back on the angle. Thomas wants it quickly. Right. Going around the corner, but manhandled to the ground. Thomas. And Blythe driven backwards as well. There's some sting in this Waratah's defence. 
Seen two early tries to the men in blue. Or white tonight. And now the defensive line is holding up nicely. Wilson playing short. Here's O'Connor looking for some room. And gives it to Fluke who is not in the best position. But now it's tackled. Life out the back. Campbell to Wilson again. Needs some support. Fluke again. Looks to drill it in behind and then comes back and hits the referee. But this Waratah's defensive line so far answering every question the Reds are throwing at them. Very much so. I think the big thing for both attack and defence so far this game, the, the Tars are out muscling the Reds on both sides of the ball. You can see any time they carry, they've got two men in, big hits, even when they uh, and then when the Tars have the ball, they're getting over the game line and, and you know, beating up on, on the Reds. You can see there's two, three men in the tackle. Every opportunity they get to hit someone, they're hitting, hitting players. You know, James O'Connor got hit just after he passed the ball. They're sort of not taking any prisoners. So they're, they're obviously switched on. They're keen to play. And I think it's a, you know, you can sort of tell by the way that they've approached the beginning part of this game that they're right up for it. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, it, it seems like a bit of a mindset thing. We know this Reds team, how, how good they can play. We saw it last year, how well they can play the team. And a lot of the guys are on the field now were part of that, that final winning team. So it, it, they just need a bit of a mental switch for whatever reason to get into the game. They just don't look on it. They don't look all part of it. They don't look like they're, they're joined together. Whereas the Tars, on the other hand, they seem for, up for it. They're very keen. They're strong. They're big tackles, big carries. And it's a, you know, it's, it's a very stark contrast in the first sort of 17, 18 minutes. The, the delay that we had prior to the game, we've spoken about it at length. We don't really want to rabbit on about it, but that can have a real effect on your mentality going into a game. Obviously, with the Tars, it's had the switch-on mentality, the Reds. Maybe not so much. Yeah, look, things happen. You know, we, we were talking in that outage. You know, there's so many times things that happen. It happened to us, and I think it was 2010 in Auckland. We were playing mid-game. Lights went out. We spent 35, 45 minutes in the change room. Came back out again. So it's, a, it's something that happens, and things happen in a game of rugby. So a lot of the time, it's the way a team adapts yeah. to how that and, and reacts. And at the moment, you'd have to say the Tars have reacted better to whatever has been thrown in their way, and the, and the Reds are a little bit slow to get out the blocks for whatever reason. It is a trial game. It's 14-0 to the Tars, but uh, trial games have a tendency to get silly at the back end as well, so we could see anything. And Jamie Roberts is on the field. Welsh international, British and Irish Lion, 97 test matches. It's great to see him playing his rugby down here in Australia. You obviously played with him at, at Quinn's, James. Yeah, no, it's great to see Jamie come down. I know he's uh, he's been a fan. He, he spent a bit of time before COVID hit. He was playing for the Stormers in South Africa, so he's always been a fan of Super Rugby. And um, yeah, I think the 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 opportunities aligned. His um, his his partner, his his uh, his fiance is is Australian born, so there's a, a family connection down here as well. So I think he, he jumped at the opportunity when it came up. And I, I think look, he's a He's a, a seasoned international. You know, he's, he's won a lot of things at a lot of clubs. He's played all around the world. So he'll be great for this Tars team. You know, we were talking before how young they are. You know, while they've got a lot of skill, they, pop, they might make some silly decisions under pressure, whereas he's got that sort of experience. And he's been playing some great rugby over, over for the Dragons in, in Wales before he came back here. So Stuart, out the back to O'Connor. And here's Campbell. On the wraparound. Reds take it wide. Inside ball from Wilson to Salakai Loto. It was clever. Down Gunu. Keen to get involved. Wilson. A little bit of footwork at the contact line there. Doesn't make any ground though. O'Connor. Switch play with Stewart. Horton over the ball. He was straight onto that one and got himself into a strong body position and affects the turnover. Yeah, great turn. Another great defensive set there from the Tars. And what that's done, you can see by the, the couple of men in the tackle allows their defensive line to get set. So the ball's much slower, so it allows their, their, their defenders to be there in the line. And then they, you know, the, the Reds just missed that clean out. And it was a great quick latch onto the ball and, and an easy penalty for the referee to give. Tom Horton... Spent some time in Wallabies training camp a couple of seasons ago. 
and was given some work-ons, and it'll be good to see him step up because that hooker position in Wallaby Gold is wide open at the yeah, moment, isn't it? Very much so. I think across Australian rugby, the, the hooker position is wide open. There's some big opportunities. We've got some, some good young talent coming through, but it is such a critical position in the rugby team. Uh, and it's such a unique skill, so it's uh, yeah, it's a, it is a tough position to play. McWright cleans up the scraps. It was untidy, and still driving his legs, but driven backwards by his opposite number. But knock-on advantage. Stewart shows, opted to kick or shaped to kick, but didn't. And now Thomas puts it on the toe. It was a 50-22 option, but. Can't quite make the 22. Very close, though. Very close. Good option there. I think he's, he's, he's done well, Thomas, to see that space at behind behind the Tars defensive line. But there was an option to go wide there. But it was much better from the Reds. They held on to the ball, made some good metres over the, with the carry, which they have been missing, I think. They've, they haven't had any quick ball. They've been out-muscled, as I touched on earlier. So good set there from the Reds. Jeff Cridge, the Kiwi man from Christchurch, has... Taking that one down and yeah, Horton setting up the mall. They're well drilled this Waratah side. Already we're seeing it's only trials as we say, but good signs from the men from New South Wales. New coach Darren Coleman took over the start of the year, or back into last year. And the high ball's been taken by Turner, who stays strong. Donaldson shifting it to Parisi. And Parisi runs into the shoulder of McWright and just gets over halfway. There's a defensive play from the Reds, though. Hamish Stewart rushed out and forced the error on... Yeah, it was Cridge. Red two and white three are down. Here's another look at it. Yeah, please. Yeah, thank you. Parisi fighting for every inch, and then it was Stewart who rushed out of the line and forced the error. Yeah, good pressure there from Hamish Stewart. And I think it's something that allowed that to happen was the slower ball that the Tars got at the breakdown before. If you can see that previously they've had a lot of quick ball, much harder to get off the line as a defensive line. So what's happened there, slower ball allowed him to shoot, and uh, he's made a great decision to... To, to pick and choose, and, and the big man tried to, to go with the left-handed offload, and I don't think it worked for him. So, we're just huddling up here. It's a re very warm night in Roma, country Queensland. Mercury's still up over the 30-degree mark. No doubt. Look, it's uh, it's always fun, these, these trial games, sort of in late Jan, early Feb. They're always uh, always a sweaty one. I remember we used to play games up in Cairns and up in Darwin, late January, nice and nice and humid, nice and sweaty, and uh, certainly a test with the with the jerseys. You know, you can see there. Look how wet the the jersey looks. You know, the the big boys will be sweating early yeah. on. So look, it's uh, it's tough conditions, no doubt. But both teams are in it, and uh, look, it's a it's a good opportunity to get some match fitness back. Classic conditioning. That's what. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Get as fit as you can before round one. Super Rugby Pacific kicks off next week. Catch it all live on nine and Stan Sport. Waratah's taking on Fiji live and exclusive on Stan Sport. Next week, great to have the Fijian and Drua in the competition this year. Yeah, I think it's going to be an exciting competition. You know, I think with the, with the two the inclusion of the two new teams and the you know just the Pacific competition, hopefully we can see with borders opening that we can get the competition as it was planned originally. But no, look, it's exciting to see the Fiji and Drua, particularly here in the Australian side of the conference, and Moana Pacifica in as well. I think they're great additions. So Stewart in at first receiver and wrestled to the turf. Stewart Wilson rather. Thomas, shifts it along the line, O'Connor, Campbell, makes a couple more metres, but again, this Waratah's defence, they've tried the choke tackle a couple of times, try and hold the Reds players off the ground. Look right, spinning on the deck. It's Fotowaka. O'Connor. 
to Blythe. Thomas drops it back inside to Campbell, but it was well read by Holloway. And here's the choke tackle. Holding Jock Campbell up off the ground. Whistle all go, and it'll be a turnover. That's just clever from yeah. the Waratahs. You can see that that's been coming for a couple of uh, couple of phases now. I, I think that the, it's obviously a ploy from the Tars, something that they've been working on in the off-season because they've been trying it for a couple of phases, and this one they just get in here. You, get, you can see... Sorry, Jock Campbell gets caught very high, and then the two big men get in there around him, and he's, he's never getting that ball down from there. So, look, well done from the Tars. Great work. But I think the Reds have got to be a bit sim a bit smarter to what's going on. It's uh, That's been coming for a little while, and I think they, they need to adapt. They need to get their body height down, and they look a little bit lost in attack. They're, they're sort of lacking a little bit of direction. Now, whether that's because, you know, James at 10 hasn't been there all week to, to sort of understand what's going on, or or whether they're just trialling some new things and trying to do, do things a, a little bit differently, but I'm not sure. But they just look a little bit lacking direction and organisation in their attack compared to the Waratahs who look very organised and clear in what they're trying to do. Jake Gordon keen to slow things down, wants to pack the scrum again. So... We we'll have a talking to here. Clear direction there from Reuben Keane. Very much so. I've never met a hooker that didn't think he was right. <laughs> so, now look, I think just again these these trial games, you're just feeling things out, trying to trying to see how things are working. You know, first time doing it in well, for some in, in anger, or second time, so you just getting things right and uh, I think the referee had had enough there to warn them so it's uh, probably a fair short arm solid platform Gordon breaks off to the near side and Donaldson can't find touch Campbell sends it downtown and Donaldson once again thank you Finds touch up towards halfway. Nice little touch finder. He's looked very composed so far, Ben Donaldson. Nothing really phases him. No, he has. He's, he's, he's done the, the basics really well. He's held his feet in attack and not, not overplayed his hand. And when he's had the opportunity to relieve pressure for his team, as we see in this case, he's done so very well with the boot. So he's uh, it's been quite a, a complete performance so far. And it's obviously kicking well from uh, from the boot as well for two from two and one was from out wide on the right hand side so uh, you know two tough kicks for, for goal Sonica Lotto sends it down here's O'Connor and Fluke out the back to Dalgunu oh well read though Parisi drives him back 10 metres brilliant tackle Kalani Thomas feels like he needs to get some more forward momentum so it goes himself no not out no oh what a tackle from Izzy Parisi yeah very organized at the moment and drive through and get the turnover as well so not switched on at all the Reds at the moment and Bell comes away with it gets caught and Gordon He's screaming at, I think it's Fotoeka to roll away. I think that turnover there probably shows the, the change in attitude of, of both teams. And what a hit from Parisi. He's driven him back there at least 10 metres. But this, this counter ruck, I'm trying to see who that is with the first coming through. But it's Charlie Gamble, I think was the initial initial hit there but that shows the change in attitude i think the tars are just up for it they're keen at every opportunity and the reds look lackadaisical they look not lazy but they're just not keen they're not playing the game at the same level that the tars are and uh, i guess that shows on the scoreboard and here's another opportunity for the tars so the reds are, i'd imagine brad thorne and the coaching staff would be very very disappointed with the with the attitude some of the execution is fine but it seems that they're the attitude, they're just a little bit off the pace. And a brilliant touch finder as well from Donaldson has put the Tars in scoring range once again. Horton 
Gives it to Gordon. Here's Roberts. His first touch of the ball. Upended. Gets it back for Swinton. And now he'll be trouble for the Reds. They've had the warnings. And Lucan Salakai Lotto will spend 10 in the bin. The last 10 minutes of this half. No, 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 no. Oh, Gordon went to go quickly. No. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think Lucan's given away a penalty up until this point, but that was the referee had, uh, had given the given the name, and and that that's what that's what happened. So unfortunately for the for the Reds, uh, that had to happen. And it's just a frustrating, another frustrating element. And Lucan, he just gets trapped. He gets his right arm out. And he does, he's not making an effort. You can tell there. And that's just an easy penalty for the referee to give away. And look at Jake Gordon. He's Jake Gordon's communication tonight to the referee has been the best out of anyone on the field. <laughs> has, been, has been consistent, is what the word would be. Every time you go, near, he's near the near the ref. You can hear him, and I think I can, I can only imagine what the ref mic isn't picking up. A, he's, he's a captain. B, he's a scrum half. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a tough combination that for any <laughs> any referee. I think any time they see a scrum half as captain, it's not a not a fun time. But look. He's doing what's best for his team. He's, he's barking orders around the park, and he's leading him around the park well. Another huge opportunity with uh, with only seven in the scrum for the Reds. They've gone no number eight, so interesting to see what, what the Tars do here. They get the feet working. Penalty advantage. Gordon breaks away. Here's Roberts. Pops it out the back to Donaldson, and Turner can't reel it in, but the, they're playing with house money. <laughs> Another big opportunity there. Look, I think the Reds going seven in the scrum. The Tars, last time they were down here, had two big scrums where they nearly went for pushover tries. So it, you wonder whether it's better for the Reds to, to put eight on the scrum. Maybe Kalani Thomas doesn't play so high on that side and covers, covers the short side. And then the, the Reds can sort of mix and match in the back line a bit, little bit and, and make sure they shore up the scrum but they've gone looks like they've gone with seven again interesting to see big big effort required here from the from the tight five and it looks like i think it's uh, liam wright's gone into the second row to to cover for lucan big crowd here in roma they're yet to see queensland fire any shots in all Waratahs, and here comes the shove. Another penalty advantage. Harris breaks off the back to Gordon, who pops it off the deck to Gamble. Charlie Gamble brought down a meter out. Gordon looks left. Donaldson plays short to Turner, but it's been knocked on. And another sin bin here. I thought he was going in his pocket there. I, but I, I saw that. <laughs> I think he had a here. We've had a scrum here. He's in fringe, okay? Happened twice again. He does. Oh, okay. <laughs> so 13 plays 15, and this has made life very difficult indeed. And so they'll have to come on with a, a front row replacement here. If the, if the, if the Tars do go for, go for a scrum, which it seems like they've opted to, so they need a front row replacement. But as we spoke about earlier, you probably don't want to see this in a trial game. It's not what we're, you know, what both teams are trying to get it. But... Unfortunately for the Reds, the, the referee has no choice. He, they've, they've infringed that many times, and then from a realistic point of view, this is what would happen next week. If he infringed twice with the ball, with the Tars going forward, that would be it. I was going to say, we as fans probably don't like seeing it, and we as, as spectators probably don't like seeing it, but is this something that Brad Thorne would look at and go, hey, this is a nice test for you guys going into the Super Rugby season to, to test yourselves as... In this situation, oh, definitely. I think look, you, we've seen throughout the you know rugby seven, seven, globally in the seven, in the last seven. couple of years that there, there is a big chunk of rugby now played with with less with less than 15 men, whether it's through red cards, yellow cards, accidental infringements, and you've got to learn how to manage that situation. And sometimes you don't. If you don't practice and you don't do it in a game, you don't actually understand. Like is who, how you load up the scrum. What happens if you've got only seven in the scrum? How can you defend differently? And I think, for, particularly for young players, it's a really good opportunity to learn what they can do to, to defuse situations like this. So Floyd Aubrey looking on. Hasn't had any opportunity yet. The 
this is this is tough work now. It's a six-man scrum. It looks like Felipe Dangunu is going to jump in and try and add his weight. So they've taken off Fraser McRide, it seems. Yeah, so Harry Hoopert in to replace in the front row. Now the shove comes. It pops out the back, though. Turner has to go and rescue for Jake Gordon. And it's still on, though, for the Waratahs. His gamble. Bell beating the first tackle. Tars. It's been intercepted. Stewart. Pops it to Campbell, and Campbell puts it on the toe. Reds get out of jail. That's wow, that is a huge read was, from Hamish Stewart. I was going to say, huge intercept. I'm not sure what was happening on that right-hand side, but there seemed like something on it. It was, uh, it was an all-or-nothing sort of play there. And uh, if that didn't come off, I think the Tars were in, in the corner. Well, he had to do it. He, yeah. he got 13 men on the field. It was probably a, a, a pretty certain try if he didn't go for it. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have got it. So, Reds get out of jail. Tars back towards their halfway. Donaldson drops it short to... Oh, Roberts is creamed in midfield. He's getting up very slowly. Just got caught on the hop. And the Reds clear downtown. Peach is back there. Alongside Alex Newsom, who has the ball and will look for the touchline. Yeah, Jamie Roberts still down where he copped a big shoulder. Yeah, Outside a, in, I think it was. It's a big hit. I think. There's a, been a double blast on the whistle there from the referee. I'm not sure what's going on there. Here's another look at the intercept from Stewart. I didn't have a good sleep here. Okay. I can do what I can, but I didn't have a sleep. White 12 coming off. Sounds like Jamie Roberts is coming off the pitch, maybe with a HIA. Yeah. Oh. I haven't had a, a good close look at the incident, but he, um, he looked a bit gingered getting up to his feet, so hopefully he's all right for their round one game next week on Friday night against the Fijian Drua. The good, good news is he's walking off on, under his own uh, power there, so that's good. Yeah, you want to have a full squad of 30-odd people, don't you? Oh, there it is. There didn't look like there was too many arms there from say, Cash there's Nasser. There's not a lot of arms there. White, hold the line. So I think hold the line. Don't might move. be a little bit lucky that uh, we probably don't have as many cameras here at, uh, in Roma that they will do next weekend. But when you're playing in maroon and blue, there's long memories as well, <laughs> isn't there? When they take on each other in around three, I think it is, it could be... A big one. O'Connor goes high. Chases are on. Newsom can't reel it in, so it's still there for the Reds. Right. Hoop it. O'Connor dribbles it in behind, looking for the chasing down Gunu. But Dylan Peach is there. Will come back for the penalty. Tell you what's sometimes funny in these situations when teams go down to 13 men, it actually switches you on a little bit. You know, it might have been a good thing that the, the Reds needed. It's, you know, they, they've certainly been off the ball. They haven't been as switched on. They haven't been as focused as what you'd expect them to be. And maybe the fact that they've gone down to 13 men, there's sort of been a, a flick switch and gone, actually, guys, we're going to have to pick up here because we're down to, down to 13. So hopefully we can see this little period now before half time for the Reds to get some momentum going for them because they've been very very stagnant in attack had no flow to their game and it's uh, you know been a very frustrating period for them I imagine for their coaches but also you know you've got to take your hat off to the task they've been physical they've been organized and they've been understanding of the task and they've uh, they've put oh. James Turner the touch, not touch. There you go. So, James Turner did a brilliant job then trying to parry that one back into the field of play, but because it crossed the plane, it's in touch, and that is a brilliant kick. Yeah, because he's, he's knocked that on down and he didn't catch it cleanly jumping from outside to in is the reason that there's a line out there. So if he had caught that cleanly and run with the ball, would have been play on. 
Wright pops it down to Thomas. O'Connor looking for Aubrey on the inside. He gets hit hard by Swinton. Still there for Thomas. Wilson. Again, just using some footwork at the line, but it's been ripped away by Will Harris. And the ball is there for the Waratahs. Gordon with the old top spinner puts it into touch up towards the 10. So the Waratahs get out of jail. Yeah, another frustrating attack there for the Reds. Very much, again, high into contact. You can see the Tars getting two to three men in the tackle, attacking the ball, trying to choke Let's tackle in, in, a, in an essence. And, uh, again, working on Harry Wilson there. And, unfortunately, the ball popping loose out of his hand from some good defensive work from the Tars. And Horton goes short. And oh, the big man. running down the sidelines, Angus Bell, he's still going. Really winding up. Angus Bell, here's Donaldson. Looking for the cross kick. And he's looking for Pete, but down Gunu is there and marks it. Look at the charging run there from Big Angus Bell. He's got the high knee lift going. Tricky play down the front. No hooker in the channel there from the Reds. So they've good eyes up play from the from the Tars. And look at the big knee lift on the big fella. Oh, I tell you what. He had some early speed, didn't he? Like a greyhound out of a gate. I don't know if he's ever seen that much space on a rugby field before in his life. <laughs> Thank you. So the Luca and Salakai Loto is coming back on the pitch. So the Reds are back to 14. Still a man in the sim bin. Dane Zander for a scrum infringement. That didn't look very straight at all. And whistle goes. So, yeah, Will Harris, he just caught that on his outside shoulder. So, there was no hiding, no no, no disguising was, the fact that that wasn't straight. No, I don't think there was much arguing there from the hooker. Yeah, but we can't, we can't end you on can that. You can see they're trying to go quick. You can see the Tars are trying to pick the, the tempo up at line-out time, particularly around Boys, the centre section of the, of the pitch. And um, just then, you know, these, these hot nights, time. the balls are sweaty, time. you can see there. NASA's got it using the towel a lot on it, but the ball and the, the grip can just slip out the hand, and it just didn't look like he had good grip on the ball before he threw it, maybe rushed a little bit by his, by his caller. And that one falls for Hoopert. Fortunately, Wilson charging back on the angle. We can't make many metres. Once again, the Waratahs' D-line is holding solid. Over the top is Charlie Gamble, but it's just a little too late. There you go. So Jeff Cridge just took his time to roll away. It's a great body position to get on the ball, but yeah, fair, fair call there. He just didn't make any effort to get out of the way and, and impacted the players being able to, to make the clear out or attempt the clear out. So O'Connor pops it into touch, and that is half time here at Gallus Fox Park, where it's been all Waratahs, you have to say, Kev. Very much so. I think the Tars could feel very confident with that first half. I think they've been they've looked very physical, they've outmuscled the Reds, certainly across both sides of the ball, and they've been very clinical when they've had opportunities down the 22. The Reds, on the other hand, have looked very slow to get out the blocks. Don't look like they're that keen to be there at the moment, so I'm sure there might be a bit of a dressing down in the in the sheds from Big Brad Thorne, and you might see a different Reds team come out in the second half. All right, well, we're going to take a short break. It is the Waratahs leading the Reds 14 points to nil in this last trial before kickoff of Super Rugby Pacific 20. Opportunity to play with ball in hand. All right, the team's coming back out onto Gallus Fox Park here in Roma, home of the Roma Echidnas. And Josh Fluke still on the field. So we'll take a look around this field as, as they run out and just see how many replacements there are. Doesn't look like there's too many from the Waratahs actually to start with. Of course, we did see Jamie Roberts come off the field. He probably won't see him again tonight. No, I don't think so. I think in a trial game, it looked like a, a head injury assessment from that tackle. So you definitely won't see him again. Uh, and you hope he... For the Tars' sake and for his sake, he recovers for, for round one. But 
Looks like there was, I think I saw Taniella Tupo running out there for, for the Reds, so that would be a, a big change. I think Sarah Uru is, uh, is also on the pitch there. We can see from the wide angle. So, look, we'll, we'll see what happens with the, with the teams, but it'll be interesting to see how it goes for, for this first section. All right, all set for the second half. It's a late start here, and it'll be a late finish. And we've also got a new ref for the second half, Jordan Way, sharing the whistle tonight with Reuben Keane. So Jordan Guns Way is out there. And blows on time for the second half. Campbell is high and... Drops it right on the 22. Pinpoint. Turner did well to reel it in. It's Matt Greeley who raced through and made the tackle. So a couple of replacements for the Reds. Let's see what that halftime chat might have been like for the Reds as Donaldson pops it into touch just outside the 22. Good attacking opportunity here. Understood. for Understood. the Queensland Reds. Yeah, big big pressure there on the kick of Donaldson and, and you can see there the Reds are trying to play a bit more up-tempo. Alex Murphy's on the field now, so it looks like they've had a, a big change in the front row and the forwards, the, the Reds, but the back line looks fairly similar to how they finished the, the first half. Siri Uru drags it down and Wilson has to rip it away. Murphy looked to rejoin them all then, but told to use it and does well. Spencer Jeans. Uru. Jeans is on the field. Here's Tupo. Quick ball. Along the line, Campbell straightening his fluke, but oh, bashed there by Lockie Swinton. And Liam Wright looked to play it at the back, but held on to it in the end. Tupo plays it out the back this time. Here's Jordan Pattaya. Jordan Pattaya stays on his feet. Makes extra metres. Here's Stewart. Inside the five. This is better from the Reds. Taniela Tupo running the angle. And giving good clean ball for Salakai Lotto. Pattaya getting involved a couple of times in this phase of play. Wilson charges through the hole and the Reds, that's better. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a lot more like what we've seen of the Reds of, of the last couple of seasons. A lot more playing flat on the line. Big forward runners making good carries with the ball, sucking guys in and uh, big Harry Wilson there is bringing up whatever he had at, uh, at halftime. So he's not happy with the camera team either. Uh, but look, look, I think you can see from the Reds here, they're, they're playing flat to line. Guys like Jordan Bataille, Taniella, Tupo, making an impact since they've come on the pitch. And I can think, you can see how important those sort of guys are to the team. And Harry Wilson picks a nice line off Spencer Jeans there at, at Scrum Half, who's come on and, uh, and just used the post as a bit of a shield. So great start for the Reds, perfect to what they wanted. And um, yeah, I think it might, be, might have been some stern words at halftime from, from Brad Thorne and the coaching staff to, to switch the guys back on. Just looked like a bit more energy from the Reds, didn't it? And the conversion goes over from Filippo down Gunu. So we cut the gap to seven points. Trial game, just working some combinations ahead of Super Rugby Pacific kicking off next Friday. You can catch that live and exclusive on Stan Sport. As Campbell drills it downfield. Ram. Ram goes high. And it comes down with snow on it. And it's a good chase too from Ram. Pattaya has to tidy up and puts it into touch on the full. Wasn't his best. So it'll be a line out back down inside the Reds half. Great pressure from the kick there from from the Waratahs and pressure and force the, the error and uh, Geordie probably wants that kick back I think it was, a, it was the right option there was space there but just again probably needed the, the pitching wedge not the not the five iron he's got a pretty handy golf bag Jordan Pattaya but that wasn't his best 
That's a good steal there from Sarah Uru. And here's Matt Greeley shifting it across field to Pattaya. The Reds with the line-out steal. And Jeans just pops a little one over the top to Angus Scott Young, who's on the field. His first involvement. Right. And a little muddy patch here on the ground at Gallus Fox Park. And Jeans will box kick it out of there. Sits up high, Rams done well, but gets smashed in the tackle by Dalgunu and Wilson double teamed him. Flinging the ball wide was Donaldson and Holloway gets caught short. Behind the advantage line. Swinton. Oh, that's heavy contact from Murphy into Swinton. Big hits in Roma. And they get the penalty as well. Some great play. It's on again. I think that was Alex Murphy and Lockie Swinton. I think they. Uh, I don't think they stopped going from from that hit. And uh, both are, are fiery characters. So it's uh, yeah, plenty of feeling as as we said in the first half. And interesting to see what comes of it because the. They did warn them in the first half there'd be no more of it, but as you said, we've got a new referee. And look at that, that's textbook. Good dip under the under the ball, under the ribs. Textbook tackle from, from Alex Murphy. He just gave it an extra little bit of mayo on the yeah. uh, on the, the, yeah. the grounding on as well, didn't he? Yeah. Just a little extra shoulder fling. No, it's going to be penalty against you for carrying on with it. I'm going to speak to him too because the just going after that. The penalty's going to be against him. Okay? Like I said, that's number six. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. But he's the instigator of it. Okay? Six. The penalty is against him for instigating it. But you just need to leave it, okay? You just need to leave it, okay? The penalty is against him for instigating. On me, Jordy. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... That's another thing that the Reds probably need to sort out is the discipline. Yeah, very much so. But I think what Brad Thorne would have been would be impressed about and excited about is that, the, as you touched on, Swain, the energy is back, back there in defence and attack. They just look a lot more energetic. They look more up for it in a very simplistic term. And, and whether that's because they just needed some time to get in the game or personnel like Taniella have come back onto the pitch. But... It's been a, it's been a, it's been a big, a significant lift in the first seven minutes of this second half. You're right. The Wallabies' caps on the field have increased with Pattaya, Tupo on the field, and with that has come some serious energy. So Mahe Vailanu with his first throw tonight. He goes to the front. Smitten. Basketball passes it to Gordon, and Gordon finds Turner in the midfield. Jake Gordon is continuing his conversations with the referees. I don't need you to keep screaming at me the entire game. You did it the entire first half. Cut it out. No. We're not in the gold zone. You weren't in the matter. You had the yellow card for it. You've got to love it. Don't ask for it. Jake Gordon is captain. I said it. Ben Donaldson. That is a full-on argument yeah. between the referee and the captain. Yeah, very much so. And I think like you can understand where Jake's coming from, but uh, unfortunately, the, the referee is the one with the whistle. And if he's getting frustrated like that, I think it's, he's obviously new to the captaincy, and it, you've got to learn to pick your moments. You look at someone like George Gregan, who was probably the expert at it, was and knew when to push the line and pull back and make it his friend. And if you get the referee offside... It can be uh, it can be a long game and a long year, so I think that's a it's a learning for him certainly from this game. So Holloway drags it down by Lanu in control, and they're making good meters here now. The Waratahs they set up a well constructed maul. Gordon shifts it across to Donaldson. Coming around the corner is Tawaki Pulu. Gamble. Had a wonderful 47 minutes, Charlie Gamble. Slow ball by Lanu. Looking around for options. Pops it just to his left to Swinton. Don't hold him. Don't hold him. Faulkner. 
Cridge on the ground to Akipulu. Get his hands on the ball. Pick and go. This is something different from the Tars that we saw in the first half. They're keeping it tight now. Showing us a few different blades to their Swiss Army knife. Gordon pops it out the back. Long pass to Peach who uses some good footwork and gets the ball free to Ram. It's Williams on the field. Gordon to Vailanu again. He's shown some good energy in this first few minutes of the second half. Faulkner, will pick and go. Gamble. Ten out from the line. Working very hard here, the Waratahs. Phase after phase. And the Reds defending phase after phase. Ball rolls back. And Wilson picks it up. And it was knocked on by the Waratahs. So the Reds survive. That's some combative rugby right there. Yeah, very much so. And look, I think the, the Reds definitely have stood up there compared to where they were in the first half. I think Angus Scott Young, you can see him. He's been a, a real tyro. And, he's, and something we didn't probably mention when he came on in the second half. I think he came on for Fraser McWright's uh, after the second sim bidding. But he's certainly a, another one of those players that gives that energy. And you can see there they've certainly muscled up a little bit. I think we were quite critical. I know I was quite critical of the Reds in the first half. They were... They were, they were out-muscled by the Tars, and, and, you know, I think they've probably taken that a little bit personally and had that opportunity. And, there's, you know, as a forward, there's no better way to show that than the pick-and-go, sort of the, the combative zone around the ruck, and they've shown that there, and so they've got a good opportunity to, to clear their lines. Angus Scott Young spent the back end of last year playing in the New Zealand Provincial Championship. Uh, for Bay of Plenty and came back and said he learnt a lot. He actually won, won the Bay of Plenty uh, Warrior of the Year award and he said he's come back and learnt a lot from playing over in New Zealand so that, that can only be a good thing. Yeah, I think so. Look, I think there was, a, there was obviously a gap. You know, he's got obviously got huge ambitions to play for the Wallabies and, you know, didn't get that opportunity last year so he, he went off his own bat to source a, an opportunity to play over there and just play in a different environment. I think that can be great things for, for players, particularly people that have grown through the system in Queensland. He's been been there for a long time, even though he's still quite young. He's you know he's come through the junior system, so he's probably never really experienced a, a different culture, a different place. And you know, New Zealand's a good place to do it. The MPC, a lot of players that go over there really enjoy it. Um, and look, I, I'm sure he would have learned a lot. And he uh, he come back, and hopefully that benefits him and, and the Reds, and, and ultimately the Wallabies if he gets the opportunity. Yeah, he certainly does harbour those ambitions to play in gold. His father, obviously, a, a proud Queenslander and a proud Wallaby, ex-Wallaby. And we talk combative. There was none more combative than Sam Scott Young. Uru throws it down to Jeans. Good hands, and it opens up for down Gunu, who sneaks through a small bit of space. Wilson. Hands again, Fluke, Pattaya. Makes good metres, even though it was good reading of the play by Turner. There's a short ball there from Scott Young to Salakai Lotto. It was nicely done. And it's still on here. And Wilson puts a little ball in behind. The chase is good from the Reds, so the Waratahs under big pressure here. Ooh. Lateral law, yes, but I think that's a little bit pedantic. I, I think you can. The law is you cannot jump on a dive on a player on the ground, but it, I felt it was Ram was trying to get to his feet. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's that's. I mean that's very pedantic. I think I think that law is more a safety law than anything, isn't it? You don't dive on someone who's prone on the ground. Very much so. And I don't think. Mac Greeley was really putting anyone in any danger there, but, but but yeah, I guess letter of the law. Letter letter of the law, it's probably correct, but I think in in the way that the game's going, it, I probably would like to see that play on. But special teams coming onto the field. Yeah, look at this. It's at 50 minutes. 
We've got the Super Bowl kicking off Tomorrow, on Monday. Monday yes. Yeah, yeah. And we've just seen special teams come onto the field. Like an NFL style uh, changeover, wasn't it? Swain, if you can run us through the changes, mate. That's just that. <laughs> no, well, there's Tetra Fork, you've got Ag you've got Hugh Sinclair rather, Max Douglas and Jeremy Williams also on the field. Tawaki Pulu is there. I can see. The referee just had to confirm that it was 15 on the pitch. He, I think he just literally went out and counted. So, now look, that's what trial games are about. Give guys an opportunity. And Mahe Vailanu reels it in. Tom Silk's on the field as well. Jordan White, very matter of fact. Nut, no, you infringed, mate. Get back there, Jock. And here's Tane Edbed on the field as well. In the number 10 jersey on for New South Wales now, also. And this is where you've got an opportunity now for the guys that have come on to sort of continue the momentum from the Tars' point of view. They're going to be energetic, they're going to be keen. A lot of them have probably been told, you know, you're not looking like you're going to be starting next week, so you've got an opportunity to, to, put, to place your claim, but you want to do it in the way that benefits the team. You don't want to go out on your own. So it's a. It's a tough, it can be a tough position to come on in these trial games with 30 to go and try and maintain that momentum and success that the team's been having. Well, they're certainly playing with some vigour, this team of Waratahs that have come onto the field. That's lovely hands there. And Ram spins and makes metres, but it's had the ball ripped away and Wilson flings it back in field. <laughs> Just looking for the bounce. Did it bounce up for Scott Young? It's play on. It didn't look too good for Angus Scott Young, but Tupo knocks it backwards. So the Reds just struggling with the handles, and that is one of the ugliest kicks you've ever seen, but it's actually probably a net good result. Yeah, I mean, it got a little bit loose there since the, the new players come on, but we've seen a semi-drop ball there. Taniella lets one go out the back. And then Hamish well, Stewart go. puts a, an ugly banana kick on the right foot and uh, gets the ball back to about halfway where, we, where I think we almost where we kicked off yeah. previously. Maybe a 10-metre net gain for the Tars. That's right. So, Vailanu finds Williams in the air. And Edmed short ball. Lovely stuff to Nick Chan. And getting up and going again is Riley. Red 12 offside. Got a penalty advantage here for the Waratahs. Robertson to Faulkner. Open up, Fred. Here's Edmet again looking for the inside runner in Sinclair. And no one there to help Hugh Sinclair, but here's Edmed now popping it away to Funa. To Vita Funa, former NRL star for the Manly Sea Eagles, playing the 15 man code now. Oh, big shot on. Mahe Vailanu, lovely hands from the Waratahs though, they're doing well to keep it together. Vailanu again, isolated, needs some help, now the cavalry arrives. I can't let that go on, you've got to straight off your feet. So the Reds once again, those discipline issues creeping back in, in the red zone. Yeah, and they're, they're, a lot of these penalties have been little sort of un, un, unforced errors like creeping offside you know not rolling away at the ruck stuff that you can fix up quite easily so I think it's it, that'll be frustrating but something they've got to manage come come round one but some good play here some nice little inside balls from Edmund and the outside ball to, to put the, the player through there but I think it's they've looked they've picked up where they left off these, these new players and some big shots coming in there's, as you said earlier Swain there's certainly a lot of feeling between the two teams even though it is a trial game Tane Edmed showed glimpses off the bench last year. He's play, plays his club rugby at Eastwood in Sydney. He gets a chance to show he's got what it takes to lead the Waratahs around this year. Vailanu in control, but there. Maul's going the wrong way. Told to use it. Robertson to Chan. Soft hands. Edmed out the back. Edmed, it opens up for him and he's over. 
It was probably a fortunate series of events there, but it opened up in the end for Tane Edmed, and he scores and extends the Waratahs' lead. Yeah, he's been very good since he's come on. He's been he's, he's played his hand very well. I'm just trying to check. I think there was a knock on from the Reds player here coming on the ball on the outside there. Yeah, I think that's come out from Josh Josh Fluke's hand, knocked it into Tane Edmed's hand. Very fortunate, but he was there, Johnny on the spot, picked the gap accelerated and uh, you know a very worthy score yeah the Reds just trying to do too much there in defense Edmund adds the extras so it's 21 plays seven and he has been impressive since he's come on the field it's obviously hotly contested that Waratahs 10 jersey yeah we were touching that on uh, touching on that earlier and I think it shows that uh, Oh, it's come off the back. Oh, sorry, it's come off the shoulder. So another fortunate event. But yeah, again, he's come on. He's got an opportunity. He's got 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, he hasn't really put a foot wrong so far. He's made, given, put two guys through on clean breaks and scored a try himself. So, yeah, good good first start for, for him uh, in this game. Tavita Funa sets off the cross field. So last night, hold. And Robertson. Once Max Douglas. Stay out, stay out, stay out. Thank you. Edmund shifting it. Ram, he has got a cannon for a boot. Watch this go. That is huge. And it drops Sub fifteen into touch well, over halfway. That was a big touch finder from James yeah. Ram. That's a great clearance. And it's, a, it's always a benefit to have a have a fullback with a with a with a boot and it gives you two options to clear from it, also clearing from the base, but to have someone that can kick it from about 10 out from his own line and put it into the other team's half is, a, is such a pressure reliever for your team and a, and a, and a great asset to have. Murphy throwing on the red side of halfway, but it's been picked off by Williams in the air. That's and That's by red. No, not gone. it's play on. The ball was lost by the Tars, then regathered his Lange Gleason on the field. Big bodied okay, blindside flanker and Robertson told to use it. No, it's not. Let's go. Oh. Puts it high. Contestable. And on knock, knocked on by Filippo Delgunu. So it'll be a Waratah no, scrum down. and <laughs> it's well into the Reds half now. Look, I think the, the high ball is obviously an area of the game that that's creates a lot of pressure, but it's probably something that over, over time Australian rugby hasn't been our strongest point in dealing with it, with the high ball. And, you know, having played rugby in the Northern Hemisphere, it's, it's such an important part of the game. You saw there the, the Tars setting up that that caterpillar ruck, which, which, I, which I tend to hate, and we're trying oh, to get out of the game. But it's it disgusting, is, isn't it? It's, it's, it's <laughs> annoying, you know, but... It, but in saying that, when we were playing, you know, that's what you used to do because it gives the, the, the nine space and it's, uh, and you can see what it does. It's, you know, inability to deal with a, with a good box kick. You know, it's now Boratar scrum feed, 30 out from the line when they were, you know, camped in their own half previously. So it's a, it's a, it's such an important part of the game to get right and, and it's something that, you know, we need to make sure that our, across Australia wide we, we have the ability to deal with the high ball. Tristan Riley on the field for the Waratahs. Good crowd in. The boy from Kempsey, Aussie Sevens player. Crowd First Nations man. We've got First Nations around this year in Super Rugby Pacific as well. Great to see him representing. Reds win the penalty on that one. Taki Pulu going straight to deck. It's a good pressure reliever for the Reds. It's a, it's a good result. I think nice to see him pick up the tempo a little bit here, get moving. It's sort of uh, been a little while since they've had the ball. Get in there, get the ball in their hands, and get a bit of structure. And you can see they're they're running to the line out now, so hopefully get a bit more pace in in and around the ball. What's the what's the line on Milton Mango's consumption here in Roma this weekend? I wonder. Heavy. Ooh, yeah, it'd be a big one. 
All right. Tackle now. Smith on the field. For the Reds. Okay, same way. His fluke straightening and shirt fronted by his opposite number in Nick Chan. And Salakai Lotto. Popping the ball up to Seru Uru and Scott Young does well in a lot of traffic to reel that one in. Jeans. Hooper loses his footing. Seru Uru looking to just lift the energy here for the Reds. It's been turned over though. But it was illegally done. Look, I'm not actually sure what happened in that ruck, but I think uh, leading up to that, I, I think we've seen when you look at Lukan Salakai Loto carrying hard, getting over the gallon. Sarah Uru puts a lot of energy into it. He's probably not as physical as some of the other locks that the, the Reds have, but he, he's got that sort of X factor that you like. He's He plays a bit like a, a, a wide-ranging six coming in on that lock, and I think it's it's he gives a different aspect to the game, and particularly in a game like this, I think he's He's, he's been very good since he's come on. He's, he's picked up the energy. He's, he gives a different bit of attack for, for the Reds compared to some of their other locks. And Smith drags that one down. Set up the mall. Here's Murphy. Haven't had a lot of opportunity at this part of the field, the Reds, tonight. Saw them score early in the second half. Jeans breaks away. And the ball's been ripped off the ground. Picked up, though, by Jeans. Opportunity. Oh, oh no! Knock on in goal. It's a goal line dropout. Oh, oh it was Mark Nwanganitawasi who came from nowhere. And Jeans drops it over the line. Knocked it free. He's done so well. He's, he's beaten Edmund all hands up. Oh. And he was just... A lucky, oh, no. lucky it's a trial game okay, because I don't know if his ten teammates would let him now, let him live that one down. So goal line dropout in Rugby Union. That is a good drop kick, by the way, from Edmed. He's sitting at 60 metres on the fly. And Scott Young runs okay, it back into the line. Oh, it no, could have been 21 plays 14. Instead, the Reds losing it forward. Jeans under pressure. Hasn't been the best minute or so for Spencer. No, and, and look, what a, what a turnaround from, from the Tars. You've seen literally a try that was, was should have, about to be scored to now a scrum. Their feed due to some high energy. You can see how pumped up they are. And again, the energetic. It's the second or third time we've seen them push the Reds off their own ball just with, with strong counter ruck, even when they had Reds players around the ball. So frustrating... 30 to 60 seconds for the Reds and, and, a, and a great enthusiasm and you know, energy booster for the Tars. That's something you've got to shake off and just get back to your job. I think with Spencer Jean though, he's been very good since he's come on the, come the field. He came on at half time. He's really organised the forwards around the, around the park well. He probably doesn't seem to he wasn't attacking the fringes as much as Thomas, but I think what he, he did, he gave clean distribution, which allowed the, the forwards to run onto the ball. So, look, I think it's he's just, as you said, got to shake that bit off. It's uh, It happens to the best of us, but look, I, I think he, he's had a good 25 minutes, or maybe maybe 23 minutes, probably the last 60 yeah. seconds hasn't, hasn't been his finest. He swooped on that ball and picked it up clean, yeah. didn't he? It was... In the, he was in the money. Very much so, and he uh, showed a nice bit of footwork to, Here's to, a big to leave scrum. that There we go. Big scrum for the Reds, so they've turned it over. The forwards come to the rescue. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, you know, when you look at the, the front row that the, the Reds have got on the pitch now with Murphy, and particularly Murphy and Tupo, that's probably their best scrummaging scrum, um, hooker and tight head. And I think that's a big opportunity. And then look at that kick there, five metres out. I've got to say, tonight, the kicking out of the hand for the corners has been brilliant from both teams. There's been some really good touch finders. It's a, it's a small area of the game, but it'd be, it's a really big area of the game, isn't it? Well, it's such a big difference in mentality from the defensive team. You've got a line out on the five minutes, you've got a line out on the 22. You can be a bit more relaxed, you can have more of a punt. You see there, the Tars didn't compete because... They were fearful of them all. 
whereas they would have competed if it had been around the 22. So Murphy in control. Told to use it, Jeans. And it's been shifted along by Annan, and it's been knocked on in the tackle. So Dungunu cleans up and runs. He runs it straight. Here's Murphy. Shifted along the line to hoop it on his shoulder. Oh, and that one. That one was tough to reel in there for Taj Annan. Sub 19 red. I think it was Lawson Crichton as well. So with less than 15 to play, it's the Tars 21, Red 7. I guess at the end of the day, the score doesn't really matter as long as uh, a good performance has been put in for both teams, doesn't it? Yeah, I, th I think so. But I think for, for a team like the Tars, who have been had a, a very disappointing year last year and, and probably forgot how to win. Winning is, is important in any aspect, and I think that's something that that's why this game is probably more important for them for, than it is for this Reds team. It's because they've got to learn how to win again, and it is tough, particularly for some young guys. And they should sit, you know, they'll, they'll be focusing, and I'm, I'm sure Darren Coleman would have been sitting to them, you know, we've got to win because then you get in a habit. Winning becomes a habit, and you always hear the people say, you know, they found a way to win. That happens when good teams, you know, know how to win, and I think the Tars might have lost the knowledge of how to win games. Jeans, down Gunu at first receiver. Looking for quick ball. Scott Young around the corner. And leg drive into inside five. McWright back on the field. They go same way, the Reds. It's there for Smith. Smith, close. Thank you. Still close to Reds. Jeans has to scramble back. Now's his chance. He's made up for his earlier error. And Spencer Jeans scores for the Reds. Yeah, I'm sure he's pretty relieved about that, that he's got out of the line after his little mistake earlier on. But look, great sustained play from the Reds. They've, they've, they've kept banging the door down, banging the door down, going the same way. And the ball's good down. A bit of an opportunistic play from Spencer Jean there. The ball pops out the back there and he showed his footwork again. Referee gets in the way. Nice little gap. Lunge and a dive and uh, another an easy try for him in the end. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he feels very relieved that he got he got on the on the score sheet after his early uh, mishap. So, 21 plays 14. A seven point ball game. As Lawson Crichton adds the extras, the Reds just sniffing now. Uh, it's something that was was part of the Reds game last year was the, the, their ability to finish strong. Right? There was a lot of games, particularly you know the games against the Brumbies throughout the regular season. Then we saw in the final the comeback from behind. So that's something that they probably have in, in their back, in their pocket, in their belief. And I think that's something that we might see here so it'll be interesting to see how this last 10 minutes play out the last 10 minutes before season 2022 of super rugby pacific kicks off last 10 minutes to show you've got what it takes to start next week here's ram at the back for the waratahs and runs it back with interest robertson douglas Penalty, not getting away. Harry Hoopert was caught just in an awkward position. It's, it seemed to happen a lot tonight for the Reds. That not man not rolling away or not making an effort. Now whether that's he's not making an effort or the Tars are getting these dominant carries and they're getting caught underneath the player and then they can't they can't roll away. You see it. I mean he, he is trapped, so it is a, it is a tough one, but he. He's got to look like he's got to make an effort there. And I think that's all the referees are asking for, to look like you're trying to get out of there. And if he's holding you in there, it's been made obvious. But the Reds probably need to be a little bit smarter around the breakdown and make a bit more effort to get out the way. Magnificent that we could get this event off the ground tonight after an early power mishap. And, of course, the volunteers and 
all the community here in Rima really enjoying this spectacle of rugby. Oh, Silk pops it off the ground to Funa. Sinclair. Robertson in there digging. He's by Lanu. Admed, she stood along the line. Chan just gets his nose into the 22. Tawaki Pulu. Good call, mate. Great call. And it was Fraser McWright who was straight onto that one for the turnover. Yeah, I think he's got Tawaki Pulu going off his feet yeah. there. He did, he, he did well to get back to his feet, but by letter of the law, He's, he's left his feet, and Fraser McWright is, as we know, is one of the best in the business over the ball. So, uh, leaving turnover there for the Reds. All right, Murphy. Hits the mark, Smith. Crichton. Shifts it along the line nicely to Dalgunu. And Scott Young. In the fight, Hooper leaves it behind. Jeans again has to clean up the scraps and does pretty well. Thank you. Salakai Loto pops it to Tupo. Taniela Tupo pops it to McWright. And McWright drilled in the tackle by Ram. A lot of lazy runners. Pataya, long pass out to Greeley, and he can't drag it in. So, a let off for the Waratahs. Matt Greeley doesn't need a lot of space to make you pay. No, I think he had a bit of a look at the space ahead of, in front of him and just took his eyes off the ball to catch it. But here, Taniela Tupo with working with Lucan Salakai Loto, doing what he does best in open play. And Fraser McWright, like every good seven, sitting off the shoulder, following the ball. All right, one off now. It was a long pass from Pataya, and Water yeah, really saw... There was a lot of space. Acres in front of him. Water up. Let's go, please, White. The Reds had the wood on the Waratahs scrum earlier. So still a chance here for a turnover for the Reds if they can manage it. It's, it's not a bad position on the field to have a crack here because you're, you, they're touched to the so sideline, so they're unlikely to come down this left-hand channel. So you can really get your loose head and your tight head to go quite across, go hard across from the scrum because from a, if it does wheel the other way, there's not too much opportunity that the, the Tars can take. If you're midfield, you want to try and keep it a bit squarer, but it, this is a good opportunity for the, tar, for the Reds to have a crack at the scrum. Taniella needs to probably get a little bit squarer there. You can see he's angling across onto the hooker. Um, and he's, he's getting very frustrated with his back row like every good tight head should. <laughs> I wouldn't be arguing with him. No. Not in a million years. Seen some good acting skills from, from Big Nella on the new Stan promo. Very good. Stan Ambassador. Taniela Tupo. He's got a future after rugby there. He sure does. Send him to the Oscars. Can't hold the weight. It's a great scrum there from the Reds. But a little bit of frustration, I think. The uh, the Tars just need to get the ball in, and I think the referee, that's what he, he warned him. He said, I need the ball in previously, and unfortunately they didn't put it in. So good pressure, big opportunity now for the Reds with about five minutes left on the clock to try and tie this game up and see what they can do now they're getting into the 22. So big, big opportunity here for Alex Murphy. Got to, got to find his target. And he does. Smith. That's once. They pass the ball back to Murphy. And now they're getting some momentum, the Reds. Murphy 
at the back. Now Jeans wants it. Short ball to Annan. Release! Tackle! The tackle! Oh, Fraser McWright, lovely line, and oh, Tupo and Scott Young just got tangled up. We'll come back for the penalty. But it was a battle for the big men for the football. Eight and seven white. He's coming back for the more penalty, but yeah, some great line there. You can tell the other back play is, is angry that he, he didn't get the opportunity to score the try, but I think you can see there great acceleration onto the ball by Fraser McWright, picking that hole there, and, and the big man. The two, the two Reds boys going for the same Lincoln hole here, okay? like sure uh, and unfortunately they got tangled up a little bit but another opportunity here five metre line out more look good last last set up so uh, I, I expect you'll probably see that again Big Neela didn't look happy did he in that freeze frame that we just saw Smith once again the target here's the shove now coming through the middle was Williams he did very well Jeremy Williams and has forced the turnover. Oh, that's a clutch play from Jeremy Williams. That's a huge turnover. The Reds looked really well set up. Ball was a long way back in Murphy's hands. They had a lot of men in front of the ball and he's been able to come through the middle, what it seems like. Yeah, let's have another look at it. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. That's his, fair. Head, his head just pops up. So he's come through the middle, he's fought hard to get there and, and earned his team a turnover. So great work, five metres out there in what looked like a pretty precarious position for, for the Waratahs. So Hugh Sinclair is now assuming captaincy duties. And from the last two scrums, we've had two scrum penalties. I, I, can, I can assure you I know what's coming here from Big Tanny Eller and Alex Murphy <laughs> and Harry Hooper. There's going to be one almighty shove. Less than two to play. Reds down by a converted try. And it caves in on this near side. Sinclair flies off the back. Robertson and Edmund looking to clear Put it out up towards the 22, but this is one last swing for the Queensland Reds, you have to think. Yeah, very much so. I think, look, it's, a, it's big pressure there. The scrum goes down. I don't think the referee wanted to make a call here. I think you can see there's a big angle from the, the tar scrum, but that's probably over, but made overzealous from Taniella attacking the hooker. Here's McWright to Liam Wright. Smith loses it in the contact. Waratahs, chance to swing into attack now, Ram, he's got a big boot, we've spoken about it before, look at that, it's a cannon, and down Gunu, looking to wind up now, Fluke gets back there to help, needs some support, Waratahs drive over, can the Waratahs turn it over, they have, now they've just got to hold on to it for 20 more seconds, no one can need a Wasi. Composed run. And they put it out. Ram puts it into touch. That is full time here in Roma. And the Waratahs with a pre-season victory over Queensland. It doesn't matter when the Waratahs and the Reds battle each other. It doesn't matter whether it's a trial. They get the victory. They will go into their season with confidence galore. Yeah, very much so, Swain. I think it was a, it was a, it was a good game. I think the Tars definitely the, the better team across the 80 minutes. I think we saw a, a sustained period of probably the fir first 25 minutes, 30 minutes of the second half where the Reds probably asserted a bit more dominance on the game and came back into it. But certainly in that that first half, there was, it, was, it was a stark difference. And the, and the Waratahs looked very clinical, very physical, and up for it. And uh, out and throughs the Reds in every, every facet of the game. So, look, it is a trial game. And, you know, a lot of these times, you, you sort of, sometimes you don't want to win trial games because you feel too confident going into the team. You've got plenty to work on. And both teams will look at that and go, look, we've got a lot to work on. But 
as I said earlier, for the Tars. They haven't had much chance of winning anything in the last 12 months. So any win like this, particularly against the Super Rugby Australian champs from last year, they'll take confidence from it. I'm, I'm assuring that Darren Coleman and the coaching staff will be telling the guys that. They need to get that confidence, like their belief in their ability. And they, they showed some great signs. So they've got some great young players. So exciting to see where they get to this year. Pre-season wins over the Brumbies, over a, a combined club side last week, and now over the Reds. This is a very different looking Waratahs team to the ones we've seen 12 months ago. And for the Reds, well, uh, a couple of losses on the on the trot, but they'll certainly go into uh, season 2022 looking to get a victory over the Rebels in round one. Yeah, very much so. Look, I think for the Reds, they looked very confident when they had their key men come on the pitch. And I think that might be a, be something that they're looking to do. And, and look, you, you don't want to be too reliant on certain players, but they you, that was obvious tonight. But I think... Look, they've had a lot of guys away with Wallabies, a lot of big years last year, so they're going to be a little bit slower to get out of the box. The Tars, not as many guys away. They've probably had a lot of a, a bigger chunk of pre-season time together, so they would have been sitting there chomping at the bit for months waiting for these games, whereas the Reds have, you know, guys coming back from spring tour only probably got back in towards the back end of January, so it's, a, it's a, just a different feed-in. But look, round one next week, big opportunity, and, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing how both teams go. Well, don't forget, you can catch all, every moment of Super Rugby Pacific live, ad-free and exclusive on Stan Sport. So make sure you sign up, Stan Sport, stan.com.au forward slash sport to, to sign up. Get there. And uh, tonight, it's been a great night in Roma once we got the lights on. And it's been great to be joined by you, James Horwell. Thanks very much, mate. No, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great to get it back on. Glad we could get the game going because we were very close to having the game called off. So I think everyone, and particularly the fans out in the road, it turned out it was a big effort to get out there. It's a, it's a very proud Queensland state, uh, a town, sorry, and a uh, very proud, you know, big rugby town as well. So it's great to be able to get out there and, you know, hopefully we can see some more footy out in uh, in the regional areas of Queensland as, as the years go by. Well, thanks for your company tonight. Thank you to all our crew and thank you at home for watching. It was the Waratahs victorious over the Reds in the final pre-season trial, the Santos Festival of Rugby out here at Roma. I'm Andrew Swain. From us, it's a very good evening. <laughs>